Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I'd just like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And some people I thank who have inspired me. hope they can inspire you as well. And I will have links below to their sites. They are Rabbi Yossi Mizrahi, Rabbi Ali Mansur, Rabbi Elon Anavar, Rabbi Yuval Vadir, Rabbi Daniel Asser, Rabbi... Um, uh, David Usher Rabbi, and Rabbi Ron Rubain. As well, if you've never checked out this channel before, I will have links below to my first video, which explains what MLM for this all means, what it stands for, what I'm doing. So Pesach is over. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday, Chag. Um, and now I said before, when I did the first video, part one uh, of the book review of Amuna Barib Murray's new book, which I have here, uh, which is called From the Four Corners, uh, Inspiring Stories of Converts to Jesus. And I will have a link below to uh, where you can purchase it on Amazon. So when, like I was saying, I did the first video, which was an introductory video, introductory video, and uh, I said after Pesach I would actually do the review, so I had a chance to read it and go through it and take some notes. Um, so here, here we go. So let me find my, my new, new page of notes here that I took. So this video might be a little longer than the first one. So. Two words come to mind, soul searching, the longing, yearning, wanting, desiring to find your place in the world, not only in a physical sense, but really spiritually. Sometimes you may not even know logically or concretely that that is what we are looking for until something may trigger it or may even feel that, quote, this makes sense without even knowing or understanding. Why? I see this as the link that connects or the universal theme for all the interviews that Amuna Varad shared in her newest book, From the Four Corners. Each one came to the realization in their own unique way. And as I read through each story, I feel myself being pulled into their personal struggles and triumphs, as if I am experiencing it myself, although I was born a Jew. It brings me a sense of fulfillment to make a connection with each person by reading their story, albeit in a concise, abridged manner. Um, I know some of them have actually written their books on their stories, like for example, in here there's um, Ahuva Gray, um, there's, I'm trying to think of some of the others that have actually shared their stories, or some are actually working on their, their books as well. Um, so they share their stories in a more expanded and expounded forms, um, and I just want to say a side note, as I hope most of them will want to do that, I know it's time consuming, but it's, it's so great to read uh, stories about people like this for me anyway. So it is truly amazing experience in my humble opinion to quote, live the experience of becoming a Torah observant Jew and then to go through what I would call part two by then recreating it and putting it in book form to share with others. So that's what it is. It's a whole kind of like, you almost want to say rebirthing of your whole experience in order to put it in book form like Amuna also did with her first book. Uh, which actually told her full, full story, or full story, or most of it, as much as she could in a book. Um, so then, one thing uh, us who are born Jews have to be jealous of is those who chose to be quote a member of the tribe, which is also MOT for short, is that they seem to have this endless spark, fervor, and passion that never wanes when it comes to their connection to Hashem and the Torah. So what is our excuse? We have none. That is why a book like this is so much more important for someone like me to reignite and re-inspire so that every day is like a rebirth, which is which it truly is. Because the neshama, when it leaves the body, when we are asleep, and the first words we say upon awakening is, Mode'ani lefanecha, melechai v'kayam, shehezarta bi nishmati v'chemla rabba emunatecha. What does that mean, the definition? I gratefully thank you, O living and eternal king. For you have returned my soul within me with compassion, abundant in your faithfulness. So Hashem restores our abilities to function again in this world every morning, and we acknowledge He did so with the expectation that we will serve Him and He will reward those who do. Of course, that is not to be our modus operandi, so to speak, as we do the will of Hashem for no other reason than because we are commanded to. Each day is a new day to start all over again and use the tools, which are our abilities and talents, to serve Hashem, and grow in our understanding of how to be a better representative of the King of all kings, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So each new convert does this when they begin their life over as a Jew, and now share the responsibility to be a light to the nations. Uh, one other word that has a very strong presence that runs through these stories is sacrifice. Like in the Beit HaMikdash, which is the Holy Temple, when animal sacrifices were brought for different reasons, like some for sin, some for atonement, there were peace offerings, there were just many different types that were brought. 
each each um, each story here is like their way of atoning for their previous life choices before becoming Jews and realizing they had to give up their past in order to begin anew. A fresh start. It was a new perspective. What I'd like to share with you now is um, kind of an overview in a few sentences. Some are a little longer than others um, of each story in this book. And there are 22 stories and I did also include Amun and Yosef. Just there was something in there that really clicked for me that was different than the other book. So, um, Again, in short, in short versions, to give you just a taste to quote what we'd say, whet your appetite. So then you want to read more and get a copy for yourself. So um, I'm not going to show you each, you know, area in the book. There's like pictures. Some of there's pictures of the people uh, that, that are in here as well. Um, and some stories are actually longer or the, right, the chapters are longer than others, depending on, you know, what, how it was done. Because I know some Amuna interviewed, some wrote in their own words, or some were taken from articles. So it would just came in different forms. So there are 22, so this may take a little bit longer, but I try to ca encapsulate them in each in, in a few sentences. So first is Nisa, Nisan ben Abraham. So again, I'm just giving little snippets. So that's the whole idea is that you want to go get the book and learn more about their story. So he came f coming from Mallorca, and his family was tortured and persecuted and forced to be baptized. Um, the son came full circle to find his way to Torah and helping others in the process. And also what I want to say is most of these people, for the real most part that I can remember from reading them, all ended up settling in Eretz Israel, which is beautiful. Uh, the next one is someone named Cyril Russ Berger. Of course, she had a different name before, and all these people did. Um, she's always questioning and searching for the truth as a young teenager growing up in a devout Christian home. Uh, she makes a Christian, she, I'm sorry, she marries a Christian, starts a family, and lives in the secluded mountains of the Appalachians. And together they leave their former beliefs and thus begin their journey to Torah with various struggles along the way. She says uh, she was put in a situation where no, where had no one to follow and had to blaze her own path. Next is Nisan Black. I also, Black, I also know him as Nisan Baruch Black when I first heard about him. Um, he's African American and there are quite a few African Americans in the book. Um, so that's, he goes now by just by Nisan. Um, niece in black, but I like his middle name Baruch because Baruch means blessed. So he was going from one stage to another, uh, first as a black rapper, then as a Torah Jew who had a quote hellish upbringing, um, and finally returns back to his musical roots as an inspiration and returns sparks of holiness back into the world. Um, next is Shlomo Brunel, um, like the whirlwind journey through the wilderness and the exodus of leaving the church being um, in no man's land, he says. Uh, it took over 20 years, and then um, over 20 years later, living in Eretz Yisrael and Shalim, sorry if you're hearing background noise where I'm living, it's kind of noisy, um, and having grandchildren born Jewish. Next is Eliza Bulau, I'm, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, some of the names I don't know exactly, I might not be. Um, Jewish, so she mentions Jewish identity as an Ivri, which is a Hebrew, a Yehudi as a Jew, and Yisrael as an Israelite. Um, know what to stand for. Um, number one, two, admit, admit Hashem runs the world and be thankful for it. And three, become a transformative force in the world. Who we are is our choice to renew and, and renew anew again. Next is Yisrael Campbell. Um, in the midst of his journey to have a relationship with Hashem, he converted three times. You'll have to read more for that in the book. Um, he's an actor and no less and also funny too. Um, next is Avi and Ruti Eastman. Um, both have similar upbringings. They searching for religious structure for the son, and the Jewish path made sense to them. Next is Rabbi Natan Gamed, Gamedzi. I think I, I, they did put in the book the pronunciation, but I might be pronouncing it wrong. He was. Um, he says, "Be happy and proud who you are with who you are." Um, he was on a Sherlock Holmes journey, and the Rambam and Jewish secular friends who became observant. Um, that you'll read again, you have to read the book to find out what that all means. And then he go, comes from Swaziland and now an observant Jew living in Svat in, in Israel. Next is Ahuva Gray. Um, to heal him from her grandmother was the beginning of her path as a young child, from minister to Torah observant living in Bayit Bagan. Also, that's Israel. Next is Mark Mordechai Halawa. He was a Jew all along but never knew for sure. He grew up a Kuwaiti Arab and then he was getting the wrong messages about Jews and now he's living in Yushalayim. Next is Zachariah Yishai Levin. He's another rapper, like Mason Black, who followed his own path. Um, he says, don't stand in his way. Music's still in his blood and done in now in a kosher way, 
living in Eretz Yisrael, um, studying Torah in Yeshiva, and with his contingent of newfound um, um, uh, other African American Jews by choice. Next is Yaakov David Lunan. Um, he has a difficult childhood, adopted. He was helped by Jews. The church did not resonate, but Judaism made sense. Um, he also was involved with martial arts and acting, and now lives in Eretz Yisrael. Next is Yiska, Malka Mayer, and Leora Mayer uh, Camus. Cam uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that wrong, her married name now. Mother and daughter. Um, uh, she, Yiska was saying about feeling emptiness, something is missing, searching for Hashem. Felt Hashem when giving birth, but not as a Jew. Um, and it took them to many places in their journey from, Christ from Christian to Jew um, to see the fallacies of their beliefs and the truth of the Torah. And she said, and also about only praying to the creator of the universe. Next is Yosef and Munamari, and I wanted to say a belated Mazal Tov, Mazal Tov, Mazal Tov for their 8th anniversary as Torah observant Jews, which happened on the 18th of Adar back in uh, 5773. So I wish them the best as well. So um, they mentioned some really good points too here that I think also run, run through the other people who've actually um, converted was one, intense thirst for truth. They always had that anyway in their lives. Two is seeking close relationship with Hashem. So, like I said, the, the people in the book share, I think, these two goals universally. I especially found it with the people of the color in this book, and not to pigeonhole them, but it's just the nature of that. Um, as, as quite a, a few of them came from violent or persecuted upbringings um, and now found solace and shelter, quote, under the wings of Hashem and His unconditional love, guidance, and protection. Next is Shannon Newson. Uh, let's see. Zealous. She was very zealous. Goes all in with everything she does. First with the church and later with Judaism. Um, she says, you are worthy. Have a direct relationship with Hashem. Put your truth and trust in Hashem alone. Finding meaning uh, is, was the driving force in her life. Next is Eitan Omiwi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right as well. Uh, driven to Bible as comfort in the times of unrest in Nigeria. Always asking why. If Hashem will show me the way, we'll follow it. Needing a spiritual home to believe in. Germany plays a role for transition to Judaism. Feeling spiritually fulfilled living in Eretz Yisrael. Next is Professor, Professor Malka Schaps. She turning or unsurmountable obstacles into golden opportunities. A role model to women and juggles many roles. Um, searching for reasons to be a good and ethical person. Looking... I'm sorry, uh, cooking bacon and eggs for secular Jewish friends. Um, how she re and how reacted starts to turn her life to explore Judaism. Never, f never let anything hold her back to actualizing her dreams. Next is Michael, or I guess I don't know if it's Michael, but I think it's Michael Tenju. Um, many years of hardship and a harrowing journey leading to the immense support in Eretz Yisrael to become a practicing Jew. During the, I'm trying to read my notes here, um, the early part of his experience, he said, my life became a game of pinball and I was the ball. Driven to give back to a country that took me in when I had no parents and gave me every opportunity to make a life for myself. He says, life is a series of struggles with Hashem by your side. Next is Jezlia, again, hope I'm pronouncing that right, Villa, Villa Real, from a Shabbat or Sabbath, uh, not the real one, uh, keeping church, to Ramat Beit Shemesh, which is in Eretz Yisrael, always wanted to do something to bring a message to the world to inspire people. Um, in a way, um, in the way I connected, oh, sorry, the way I connected to Hashem was through performing arts. And she said, Hashem has a mission for me with a clearer message. Next is Yosef Daniel Villa, Villa Real, and that's her actually her husband. He grew up Judeo-Christian and kept a version of the Shabbat again, too. No pagan holidays, no crosses. Then he plays guitar and went on to an evangelical excuse me, tour of the churches. Dealing with negative environment growing up, he comes to a crossroads, praying to Hashem, saying to him, and wanting a way out to have a true life. Destroy all the idols in your life. There is nothing outside of Hashem, his Torah, and his people. Next is Rabbi Dr. Asher Wade from an ordained pastor in Methodist Church to Hasidic rabbi. The anniversary of Kristallnacht was the spark, so to speak, that began a chain of events that altered his life and also she mentioned his wife as well. Um, finally found the answer what Hashem wants from us in life. He found the script of life, or I should say they actually. And finally, the last person 
in the book, Acharon Acharon Chaviv, they say the last of the best, but not necessarily, they're all amazing stories, is Aaron Waldman. He was exposed to Christianity by an English teacher in China, spent years uh, thoroughly um, studying religions, found discrepancies in translation, and then he learned Hebrew to understand the authentic meaning of the Torah. Uh, Christianity took Judaism and twisted it into something else. Identified with Jews wandering the world in search of the promised land, um, and also their persecution and their struggles. I studied, he said, struggled and questioned. Conversion after 16-year journey and actualization of a long-time identity yearned to fulfill. And then Amuna actually asked me a question when I was going to do this review is, um, you know, once I read the book, if I have a favorite story. And I have to just admit that I don't. And I, so I say that in the best possible way because they're all amazing. So you can take something like, I guess from these notes that I took and some of them I took from the book, is you get something a little different from each person depending on their situation. Everyone has such a unique journey. Again, they do have certain themes that um, resonate throughout each one. That, that like I mentioned, that Amuna and in Amuna's, you know, for her little part in the chapter, it mentions about that seeking for the truth and a relationship with Hashem. But each one is so unique and, and, and has so much uh, to inspire you with. So I, I think all of the stories are amazing and I just hope that maybe some of these, I know some are, but that they do more, I'd love to read more extensive on their stories and some I actually have I've, I've listened to some videos of some of them online you could look them up too and what I'll do below the video is I'll put all their names down underneath so you can actually search them online if you want to try to find more information about them because I, I just love it's it's like a thirst or a quest to read about all these people what they, they all their choices that they make to come to uh, be part of Am Yisrael and they've and they've made a wonderful uh, leap to actually accomplish that, and they're doing such wonderful things too, um, as uh, Hashem, servants of Hashem. And I hope and merit that we will all live to see the coming of Mashiach, speedily in our days, and rebuilding of our final and everlasting Beit Hamikdash. Amen, and thanks for watching.